I come from a family um, from the Soviet Union. Um, my mom's dad never came back from the war. She, she spent her life jumping on top of a bed. She was three, four years old. She used to imagine him coming back on the horizon, but he never came back. And um, we found out that my granddad wasn't killed by the Nazis. He was killed by his own side. He, he was a doctor. He wouldn't participate in the tortures that the KGB was inflicting on dissidents. And um, they killed him because of that. And my mother's tears, watching my mo looking at my mother's tears was when I was a kid, my hatred of the Soviet Union was born in her tears. I have a, an uncle, he was in the gulag. He used to write letters to my grand, one of my great grandmoms in the gulag. And she could never read the letters because he cried so much while he was writing them that you couldn't even read the letters. It's, a, it's quite a story in our family. These were the things that I grew up thinking about when we escaped and my devotion to fighting for freedom and fighting against evil was solidified in that atmosphere because my dad and mom stood up against the Soviet regime and they were ready to go to prison. And my dad used to tell me, because I used to say to my dad, why did you risk your life like that? Because my dad wrote petitions and signed petitions and he was standing up for dissidents. And my dad always used to say to me, I would rather be in prison than live as a snitch in society. I would rather be in prison than live as, as a slave. And um, we need that spirit in, every, in our hearts as tomorrow happens, because ladies and gentlemen, we're entering a dark time. And I, I just wanted to share two moments in time that I live with. Anatoly Sharansky was uh, a prisoner for a very long time in the Soviet Union. I don't know if you remember, he's just a very brave dissident. And when they exchanged him for the other spies on the bridge in East in Berlin, he zigzagged. Because And later they said, why'd you zigzag? And he said, because the KGB told me to walk in a stra straight line. <laughs> Until the last moment, he stood up with that triumph of the human spirit. And many, many years later, he became a minister and official in Israel. And they went to visit the Soviet Union. And he went there with his wife. And he was visiting the Lubyanka, it's the KGB headquarters. This just touches my heart so much, this story. And I live with these stories. And you know, all the FSB KGB men are there and they're all meeting. And he said, you know, I wanna take a look at the, the cell that I used to live in for years here. I wanna take a look at the cell if you don't mind. And they go, yeah, sure, we'll show you the cells over here. Come over here. He goes, no, 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 no. This ain't where the cells are. I'll show you where the cells are. And he tell, takes them to the very bottom. And there's this cellar in the very basement. And he comes in and he opens it. And the FSB is a little bit embarrassed. And he walks in and it's just this little cubicle. And his wife, as they all come in, and he says, excuse me, can I have a moment alone with my wife for a minute? I go, oh, okay. And when he was alone with his wife, he said, this is where I spent my time. And does this look at all familiar to you? And she responds, it looks very familiar because I was with you here every second. And Hebrews 13.3 tells us, always think about those in prison as though in prison with them. And I just want to tell that story because I live with that story, that love between his wife, Sharansky, and his wife, Avital. This is the love that we need to keep in our hearts every day. Because while we fight, and while we do all the activism and everything that we need to do, that love ultimately, the love of each other conquers evil. And one more, and then I'm gonna let everybody go, but it's just very personal to me because these are the stories that I live with. Armando Valadares, Cuban prisoner of conscience, Castro's prisons, 22 years, just because he was a free thinker, he was a poet. So they throw him into, and his book is called Against All Hope. Just what a book. It's, it's the Cuban version of the Gulag Archipelago. And I read that book as a young kid. My dad gave it to me to read. My dad was always worried that he was introducing me to this literature maybe when I was too young, but I'm very grateful to him for educating me and sharing everything. But I read, I remember I read Against All Hope and, and um, they put him in this cellar 
and they were throwing buckets of feces and urine on him, etc. I apologize, but I think he suffered more than us hearing it about it. And after about 30 days, they used to poke him every two hours. They wouldn't let him sleep. And when he came out, he had to peel this extra skin off of him, which was all the dirt. And these Castro devils said to him, we have two letters for you, one from your mother and one from your sister, but you can only have one. And Armando says, OK, I'll take this one. And this, this moves the world for me. He got back in his prison cell, and he took the, the letter, and he put it under his cot, because he was going to read it on his time. And you see, it gets to a point in, in life, ladies and gentlemen, where it becomes the battle for something much deeper than what we see. It becomes a battle for something inside of our hearts. This is a battle for the human spirit. And no Castro dictator, no army, no TNT, no Cuban tanks or torturers could reach into Armando's soul and conquer him there. And if we keep that spirit alive of Armando Valadares and the love between Natan and his wife, we will persevere and we will prevail. Thank you very much.